Easy, it's coming. <laughs> uh, thank you so much, Malcolm, for that uh, really thoughtful, intelligent speech covering so many challenging, thorny issues about the balance of freedom and security in a world which often feels so dangerous and where technology can so often get ahead of us. It was interesting, too, to hear your comments about Benjamin Disraeli, and I'm pleased that perhaps in one respect you didn't follow his lead, because famously Benjamin Disraeli made the longest budget, spe budget speech in the House of Commons ever. Um, it lasted five hours, over five hours. Sadly for Disraeli, his government wouldn't last another five days because William Gladstone stood up to respond and in one of the greatest speeches of the 19th century, savaged Disraeli's first budget. Let's hope that both of us have a little more luck with fragile parliamentary majorities over the coming years. <laughs> of course, Disraeli recovered to become one of the great prime ministers and parliamentarians in British history, leaving a legacy of one nation conservatism and planting the seeds of what became known as Tory democracy. With a rising wave of global protectionism and popular challenges to capitalism, now more than ever, as you have so ably set out, we need to learn the lessons from those two great statesmen about how we continue to make the case for a market economy which works in the interests of the whole country in the 21st century. Successful parties need to renew and have good ideas over the past decade. Policy Exchange has been at the forefront of giving us some of those ideas. I thank you for it, and I'm sure there'll be more forthcoming. So Benjamin Disraeli is not only credited with building a vision of one nation conservatism, he was, of course, also Britain's first Jewish prime minister. So it's fitting to be awarding this prize to Malcolm for the great work he has done to promote both immigration and integration. You've managed to achieve that delicate balance between ensuring Australia remains a land of opportunity for people from around the world while continuing to insist on the importance of people upholding deep-rooted Australian values. And in so many ways, these Australian values are the ones that we hold dear to. Our shared culture, language and history endures to this day. With Australians making over one million visits to the UK annually, and Australia hosting the largest expat population of British nationals in the world. But the strength of the relationship between the UK and Australia was particularly brought home to me last month when terrorists target, terrorist targeted London Bridge and Borough Market, which you also visited today with the Prime Minister. Two Australians, Kirsty Bowden and Sarah Zelenak, were among those killed and two more Australians were injured. Sarah's story has really stuck with me. She was stabbed while out celebrating her new job with a friend at Borough Market, just having a drink with a friend one evening. Just under two weeks before, she planned to be at the arena in Manchester, but she decided not to use that ticket. Meeting her parents, I saw the awful damage that terrorists do to individual lives and to families. And Prime Minister Turmel, you and members of the Australian Parliament were quick to express your sympathy and, more importantly, your solidarity with Britain. You, knew, you know as well as I do that when times are difficult, collaboration and support between old allies is more important than ever. You support us and we support you. We both know the devastating impact acts of, terror, acts of terrorism have and our countries work closely together on counter-terrorism. We share intelligence, we share best practice, we learn from one another, and sadly, we also share the same threat from Daesh. Last month in Canada, I was delighted to secure the support of Australia and our other Five Eyes allies for our campaign against terrorist material online. Together, we welcome the announcement that technology companies will form a new global industry forum to tackle terrorist use of the internet, and we agreed that hateful content used to recruit and radicalize should be more removed faster and more proactively from online platforms. I'll be going to the west coast of America to continue discussions with major technology companies and to see what progress they are making on the forum, and I will be sharing that progress with our Five Eyes friends and with Australia. This is exciting, important work 
and is vital in our shared endeavor of defeating terrorism. Now, the truth is, politicians love prizes. But I want to scotch the rumor that Malcolm and Lucy only came to England to collect this prize. There was the important matter of the G20 in between. But we do sometimes go on journeys to collect prizes. It wasn't so long ago that I left my beloved Hastings and went down to Eastbourne to collect a perhaps almost equally important prize, which was the East Sussex Women in Business Subsection Education Runner-Up Prize. <laughs> a tremendous honor. But today I have an even greater honor, which is to give this great Disraeli Prize to our great friend, Prime Minister Malcolm Turnbull. Thank you.